So today I'm making battery cables and I'm going to measure the length that I need from this roll. That used to be a hundred feet of cable. Most of it went into the carver. And now I'm going to use this chain link fence cutting tool to snip off a piece of the cable. Normal wire cutters aren't heavy duty enough for this. This is four gauge cable. And now I'm going to use this 911 switchblade to cut maybe a half an inch or so off the insulation from each end. And usually you have to pull on it a bit and then there's one little extra bit where the cuts don't line up at the end and then you can pull the insulation off. And now, very fast, I'm going to do another one. This tool has paid for itself many times over. It's a hydraulic crimper and it can crimp lugs like these onto cables like that. The first time I did the solar on the carver, I bought pre-made cables and these just paid a huge premium for it. And I, when I redid it, I knew there was going to be a whole lot more. So I got one of these right off the bat. And it's hydraulic, so it's in this plastic bag in case it does decide to leak at some point. It's not going to make as big of a mess. You can take this pin out and change these dies for crimping different sized lugs onto different sized cables. So I take my cable, I put my lug on the end like that, I stick it through the die like this, and it's basically just a little tiny hydraulic jack. Here's how this tool works. There's these dies here. You can open this and put different dies in for different sizes. And then there's a plunger here. It's like a hydraulic jack. And I can close the valve here. And now when I pump, this little plunger here is coming forward. And I guess I can pump it some more and close the jaws. Just lightly. So you can see more of that cylinder there. And when I release the valve you'll see the cylinder retract with a spring. So the trick is to get this in here just the way you want it. And then pump to close the jaws enough to grip it. And now I'll get in a position where I can really put some pressure on it. I mean it amplifies your force by a lot. But it's starting to get hard to pump. And I don't know if you can see, there is still a little gap here. And I want to pump until these are really very, very close together. I don't want to keep pumping once the dies are closed. Because I'm just going to put too much pressure on my hydraulic jack and blow one of the seals. But I can see almost an eighth of an inch through there. So I'm going to give it a couple more pumps. It 
checking as I go so I don't go too far. So I'm kind of putting my weight into it now. And I can still see daylight through there, but it's probably crimped. Let's see. So that's what it looks like with the crimp on. Uh, give it a good pull test. It's not moving. Probably going to be okay. Heat shrink tubing. Because there's a little bit too much copper there and it was too close to the other bus bar. So... So that shrinks it nice and tight. And now I'm just going to do a bunch more like that. See how nice? And heat shrunk. So heat shrink comes on a roll like this. Cut off a little piece that you need. I guess one for each end. It's kind of flat like that, but if you squeeze it, it gets round, and you can put it on there. And I found that it's easier to put a bunch of them on rather than turn the heat gun on and off for each one. And so it is now getting the shrink. This is actually some of the good marine heat shrink. Marine heat shrink has some glue inside that softens with the heat and makes a waterproof seal, which is even better. So there. That's got more insulation over these lugs, so they're less likely to short on something. Now I can start putting these in the battery thing. So I've taken a little bit off there and rounded the end so it's not going to chafe the other wire. I'll also try and shove some packing foam in between. But while I've got this off, I'm going to put heat shrink on all of these. That's looking a bit better. And now I can fight with putting this back in place.